Hi everyone, welcome to the video and today we are actually going to be building an accordion or a tab or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's like it's like one of those things on the tab pages of a website where it's like, you know, if you click like the the text expands and it disappears. So yeah, let me show you really quickly how this thing works. I've already set it up here and I have two examples to show you as well. So yeah, as you guys can see, uh, like basically you click here and it expands you click here and it expands again well you get the idea you can also do multiple at the same time for example and I created this one using two two types of codes so yeah first let's take a quick look at um, like the basics of it just like how the HTML and CSS works so yeah um basically the HTML and CSS for this thing is pretty standard there isn't much more to it like you know it's just like a it's like a super div body and inside it there's like a four div containers with the same name I think that they are called FAQ wrapper and there's like a title and an FAQ content that's basically the gist of the HTML of it so uh, that's pretty much it and if we go to the CSS again like the CSS isn't really anything special to look at it's basically like a super div. I can show you guys, sorry. I can show you guys actually very, very quickly how it works. And if you go here, um, again, like um, it's like a super div and it's, it's got a specific weight width and it's all centered inside, like neatly wrapped inside the body, you could say. Um, if we really go quickly here, um, what I've done also is, is this, it's very simple. For each div, I have like a super div. It doesn't really do anything. Like for each FAQ section, it doesn't really do anything. But it's the main identifier for the JavaScript thing. And I have a title and a body. So yeah, basically, as you guys figured, the body is pretty much hidden, which is uh, because um that way the user can open and close it. And the title is just a normal title. It doesn't really do anything. But yeah, that's pretty much how it works. So yeah, um, let's get started. Um, if we look at if we look at the CSS itself, uh, sorry, I mean the JavaScript itself. If we go that, sorry, if we go over that very quickly. Um, so yeah, as you guys can see, uh, basically the way the JavaScript works here is it's very simple. Let me zoom in very quickly. Um, what I do is I use um I either use a get elements by class name uh so it gets all of the elements here that have a class name FAQ wrapper and then I quickly loop through it and as you guys know what how a loop works of course if you don't check it out it's really cool um even if you're experienced always refresh this box because there's always stuff that you can be missing so anyways by digress so yeah once I initialize it I um add an event listener and basically whenever someone clicks a, uh, like clicks a specific box it adds a class uh, it adds a class called show and this sh uh, and this class is like um, basically determined here you can see and I've also added a mini like transition effect but that doesn't work well but anyways uh, so yeah let's get started I'm gonna code this out and I'm gonna see how far I can get then I'll show you guys very quickly the other way I found because it's also cooler as well. So yeah, um, cool. So uh, let's call this one uh, uh, all the all the FAQ oops boxes. And as good practice, of course, always either add a const or a let or a var. And I will, uh, oops, c-o-n-s-t equals uh, document dot document dot headline by class name. And let's see what we've named this bad boy here. Um, FAQ wrapper. All right, let's do the famous the world famous loop uh, for oops <laughs> for uh, let i equals zero 
and this is how we initialize it you could say and this is the condition i is always i always like whenever you're doing a for loop remember this i uh, always is less than the condition because it loops through the condition like it looks through the conditions and says okay you know this is less than 50 so loop through that less than 50 and I failed the job interview once because I couldn't do this specific part in a for loop but anyways man I'm just thinking about all the missed opportunities I've had but anyways right so I uh, if we quickly go over here and we do dot length so this way we calculate the length and I plus plus get it I plus plus cool so yeah now what we want to do is all oops all FAQ boxes uh, I so again like we're looping through the eyes that are inside here you could say dot add event listener click so yeah we can also use like um uh, arrow functions for this but I'm not going to for now for the sake of the video so yeah um remember guys also always use dot add event listener because this is actually like the recommended thingy like it's recommended you could say Ooh. all right and I seem to have forgotten my function um if I go ahead and do this don't forget to close it guys and if we uh right let's quickly add an alert alerts are always fun to do don't forget that all right hey there mister all right woohoo hey there mister hey there delilah what's it like in new york city good but anyways uh i tend to sing sometimes but anyways sorry ap apologies all right let's go back to this thing okay so this is awesome now let's do the second part very quickly this I'm not talking about this as in my video I'm talking about like the actual function this this function is like a really complicated one to understand but once you get it it's really useful so yeah the way we're going to do it is we're going to use at this which targets the specific elements that's being clicked this dot uh, class list class list in JavaScript is a way class it's like a way of adding content you could say like sorry it's like a way of adding a class to an existing element dot toggle and toggle is actually a really cool way of switching on and off uh, and show right show s h o w all right this will either work or not work and it just worked great so yeah everyone this is the first part as you can see here it's very easy to also wrap your, your head around all we did is we're looping through all of the boxes inside of here and we're making sure oh okay you know like um it's against the length and it's increment it always has to have an increment so that way you know it's zero one two three four etc and then all we're doing here is like um we're incrementing this thing like you know like with the eye of it you could say and then we're adding an event listener click so yeah this way actually looks cool and fine and all and as in any programming languages there are a hundred trillion ways to actually do something um so the other second way that i discovered today and that's really cool is uh using for each uh, for each is another one of those loop types that's really cool and really useful um, it also involves like a bit of an array and I'm also trying to wrap my head around it as well because as a developer you can't actually know everything that you're doing but you can try so yeah let's do it the other way the for each way cool so if we get rid of this one very quickly let's not get rid of it actually let's um uh what you might call it okay so all uh, let's comment it out sorry all dot for each and here you add something called an FAQ wrapper because that's the name of it basically let's call it all FAQ box um, and if I do an arrow function as well 
equals And you guys will see why, oh, this is actually more useful than the for loop very soon. So, yeah, if we look at what I have actually done wrong. Okay, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. There we have it. Okay, and if we quickly add the event listener. So, yeah, the all, all the FAQ box thingy. <coughs> Uh, dot add event listener dot add event listener click don't forget to add the click here c l i click and we can also do an arrow function here very quickly equals apologies ignore my ticking phone poof kaboom all right let's do an alert here a very quick hey i'm actually not sure oh there we have it oh i just ah and the reason for this is actually pretty simple uh because uh element by class name won't work with a uh, like with a for each uh one second it has to be a uh, query selector all query selector all because this way Oops, it's, it kind of like takes the, the name of it, you could say. Oh, I just hate when this happens, don't you guys? So yeah, um, and I'll also explain to you a little cool thing towards the end as well. Hey there, howdy, what's up? Cool, yeah, so let's do this again. This dot class list uh, or actually just a second yeah uh, like with this one you don't actually need to oops just a second uh, reading toggle Uh, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do this one because this way is actually really cool okay uh, query selector all okay add event listener could it be this way Ah, there we have it, everyone. So see, basically, unlike a for loop, you don't need to add this. This one is very specific. All it does is it targets that thing. Yeah, um, this is why I love programming. It's like sometimes you're stuck on something and it's like, wow, poof, it appears like the answer just appears. So yeah, anyway, so yeah, this is actually how, like two examples of how you can use for loops and uh, for each loops, uh, so uh, I yeah for each loops to like basically do a very simple accordion but you guys can already see oh you know you can actually use this for so many different possibilities and as you begin to build more complicated stuff this can really help you out so yeah um, we've explored a lot of really interesting concepts today I really hope this video is interesting as always thank you so much everyone for tuning in if you really like what you see please comment like and subscribe thank you so much